All right, this is AP, AB, and BC Calc. We are doing Unit 2, Section 4, which is connecting differentiability and continuity, and we're determining when derivatives do and do not exist. So uh, let's go ahead and get moving. All right, so what it means for f of x to be differentiable at x equals a, and we're going to talk visually first. So first off, f is continuous at x equals a. So you can't have any holes, jumps, or vertical asymptotes. Uh, a discontinuity immediately means that a function is not differentiable at that point. And then secondly, a function does not have any of the following things. A point, meaning like sort of what you'd see in an absolute value, not a point like the dot that you see, but meaning physically something pointy, like you'd see in an absolute value. A cusp, right? So, so again, a point looks kind of like this, right? Uh, a cusp kind of looks like a wave sort of a shape. Uh, or a vertical tangent line, right? So those are the three visual cues that a function could be continuous but not differentiable. Cool. So what does differentiable mean at x equals a based on the definition? So recall that uh, continuity, right, at x equals a was if the left sided limit of f uh, and the right sided limit of f and the double sided limit of f and the actual function value of f were all the same. And notice that um, there's this notation if IFF, it means if and only if. It is an actual math notation, right? So this is this is an actual math notation. Uh, when you read it, if you see IFF, you read it as if and only if. You don't read it as if. I mean, you could, but it's weird. Okay, so differentiability is basically the exact same definition, except the function has to meet this guideline already, and then it's the same rules, but for the derivative. So the left-sided limit of f prime of x equals the right-sided limit of f prime of x equals the double-sided limit of f prime of x equals f prime at that actual point a. That's what continuity means. Uh, I'm sorry, differentiability means, right? So, so continuity is all those things with f of x. Differentiability is the same set of things with f prime, but you also have to be continuous first. So if I tell you that a function is differentiable at all points, that implies continuity because you can't be differentiable without being continuous first. So differentiability implies continuity. So um, most of the theorems that we're going to be required to, to use over the course of this class are going to require that f of x is continuous, which we've already seen uh, with some things like the IVT. But many also require uh, f of x to be differentiable. So it's super important that you can look at a function, either it's its function rule or, or the graph or whatever you're given, and, and determine both the continuity and the differentiability. So we're going to go ahead and walk through some examples. So example one, given the graph of f of x, list any values for which the function is not differentiable and justify your answer based on those limit definitions of continuity and differentiability. Okay, so let's start with the, let's start with the sort of elephant in the room. Let's talk about continuity, right? So on this window, there is one discontinuity, right? So at x equals 1, f of x is not continuous, which means it's also not differentiable, right? You can't be differentiable if you're not continuous. Uh, and the reason is because the limit from the left, so the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x equals a 5, which is not equal to the limit as x approaches 1 from the right because that's totally a 2, right? So 5 is not 2. Okay, so the first one, discontinuity. But then there are a couple other points where we're going to have an issue, right? We have a point right here, and we have, uh, we have a cusp essentially right here, right? So uh, at x equals negative 4, see how this is a negative slope and this is a positive slope? right? Um, they can't be equal, right? Like this slope, right? You don't actually know how to differentiate these curves yet, but you know how the, you know how to find slope and, and derivative is essentially slope. This is a negative slope. This is a positive slope, right? So the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the left of f prime of x is less than 0. The limit as x approaches negative 4 from the right of f of x is greater than 0. Sorry, it's f prime. Uh, so they can't be equal, right? They're not equal because one of them is negative and one of them is positive, right? So negative slope and positive slope, they can't be the same, not differentiable. And then the last one, which I'll do in blue, this one right here, right? Um, same story. Again, here you see a negative slope. And then this is definitely going uphill. That's definitely a positive slope. 
So the limit as x approaches 6 from the left of the f prime of x, the slope, is negative. The limit, sorry, we're beach balling. The limit as x approaches 6 from the right of f prime of x, so the slope of this thing is positive, uh, they're not equal, right? So, so the three spots where we're not differentiable are at x equals 6, x equals negative 4, and x equals 1. Um, you're okay at 10, right? So 10 is, uh, well... 10 is okay if we assume it's not included, which is tricky. Um, so we're going to assume I wasn't given an open dot. Uh, so the trick here is if I'm given an open dot, then this graph is fine because 10 wouldn't be included. But this is a semicircle, which means that it does actually have a vertical tangent at 10. So if, if x equals 10 is, uh, is included, which presumably it is, right, if it's included, then there's a vertical tangent at x equals 10. Uh, so again, if there's a vertical tangent, we would not be differentiable, right? It's unclear whether x is uh, whether 10 is included, and that's my fault. I forgot to put uh, a dot on the graph that indicated whether it was included or not. So we'll just assume that if it's included, x equals 10 uh, has that vertical tangent, and you can see that because it's a circle, right? All right, so. Let's move on to E2. All right, so go ahead and give E2 a try. Um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and say that this is included, that that's a closed dot, um, and we'll go ahead and make this a closed dot as well. So we'll just end those two there. So go ahead and give that one a try. So, so in this situation, what we'll say is we'll say that the domain of this function is from negative 8 to 10, which I should have said in E1, but didn't. So I'll give you a domain, right? If we went back to E1, uh, the domain of this function would have been from negative infinity, we'll say to 10, and we'll include the 10, okay? So um, sometimes you'll have an arrow on both sides. In fact, most cases you will. I clearly chose to construct very weird looking graphs for you, right? Okay, so um, cool. Give this a try, uh, and you can pause me if you want. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the discontinuities. There is a jump at 4, right? So, uh, so at x equals 4, there is, it's not continuous. because So here we're not continuous, which also means that we are not differentiable, right? Um, the reason why is that there's a jump. The limit as x approaches 4 from the left of f of x uh, is a negative 1, and that's not equal to the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of f of x, which is a 3. Right, so negative one does not equal three. Um, right here, we have a cusp. Right, so here, um, so here they're both negative slopes. This this m is negative. This m is also negative, but they're clearly not the same. Right, even though they're both negative, they're not the same slope. So at x uh, equals negative two, the limit as x approaches negative two from the left of the derivative of f prime does not equal the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right of f prime, right? The two slopes are not the same. They're both negative, but they're not the same. Um, here, my slope is positive and my slope is negative, but again, they're clearly not the same slope. So the same thing's going to be true at x equals, that's 7, I think. Yeah, okay. So at x equals 7, uh, the limit as x approaches 7 from the left of f prime of x is not the same as the limit as x approaches 7 from the right of f prime of x. And again, you don't have to necessarily even know what those slopes are, you just have to know that they're not the same, right? Um, and then the last spot of concern, because I did include this negative 8 here, right, is that this is the, this is a semicircle, this is the edge of the circle, you can see that the tangent line would be vertical, so at x equals negative 8, uh, there is a vertical tangent line. So the only one where we're not continuous is at x equals 4, but we're not differentiable at all four of these points. Um, it is not a vertical tangent here, and you can even see that if you try to draw this tangent line, this one would be okay, right? Because it's not the edge of the semicircle. If you follow this circle up, it would keep going to like here naturally, and that would be where the vertical tangent line would be, but it's not here. So that's kind of the gist. Now let's go ahead and, and look at this in a different way when we're actually given a function rule. One of the things to realize is that both of these weird, crazy graphs I just gave you, right, in E1 and, and P1 are both piecewise functions. They're weird looking piecewise functions, but they're piecewise functions. So now let's look at a piecewise function. 
So given a piecewise function f of x and its derivative f prime of x, use the limit definitions of continuity and differentiability to determine if f is continuous at x equals 5 and differentiable at 5. One note here, I gave you f prime of x. You're going to know how to find that eventually. You just don't know how to find that officially now. Now, some of you probably do. But uh, for right now, you don't know how to start with this piecewise function and find this derivative. And if you do know how to do it, great, but some of you don't. Okay, so we're supposed to be looking at 5. So if f of x is continuous at 5, what that's going to look like is it's going to look like the left-sided limit equals the right-sided limit um, equals the double-sided limit. So when we're checking for continuity, we need the left-sided limit as x approaches 5. Okay, so that's going to use the numbers before 5, which would be 2x minus 7. So it's going to be 2 times 5 minus 7, which is a 3, right? I'm going to look at the other side, limit as x approach, uh, 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 limit of f of x as x approaches 5 from the right, right? And that's going to use the numbers that are bigger than 5. So that's going to be a negative 5 plus 8, which is also a 3, which means that the double-sided limit is a 3. And then I can see by plugging into the actual function where there's an equal to that f of uh, 5 is definitely also a 3. So yes, we're continuous, right? They're all the same, so yes, we're continuous. The question of if we're differentiable is if, the, if all of those things are true for the derivative as well, and the answer is going to be no, right? If I do the limit as x approaches 5 from the left of f prime of x, well, that's going to use the values before 5 here. That's going to be a 2. The limit as x approaches 5 from the right of f prime of x, well, that's going to use the numbers bigger than 5, so that's going to be the negative 1, right? And since 2 does not equal negative 1, the answer is no. It's not differentiable at 5. So continuous, yes. Differentiable, no. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this one. So uh, same idea, right? You're going to figure out continuity and differentiability at 2. I gave you both f and f prime. Eventually, you'll be the one figuring out the f primes, but, uh, but for right now, I gave it to you, right? So uh, first question, are we continuous, right? Well, if we're continuous, the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x, the double-sided limit at 2, and f of 2 should all be the same. So the question is, are we continuous? Well, as I approach from the left, I'm going to use this x squared plus 3 because those are the values left of 2. So that's going to be a 4 plus 3, which is a 7, right? As I approach, approach from the right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug in uh, a 2 here, and I'm going to get 8 plus 1, which is a 9. So right away, um, I get a no, right? So, so we are not continuous, right? Because 7 does not equal 9. The left and right limit are, the, are not the same. So here's the interesting thing. The answer is, once I know that I'm not continuous, I am also not differentiable. I don't even have to check, okay? There's no reason to check. Now, it does turn out if you check that you're going to get 4 on both sides of this limit, but it doesn't matter that the slopes are the same, right? So um, it is irrelevant that the left-sided limit at 2 of f prime of x would be a 4 if you plugged in, and that that would be equal to the right-sided limit. That's completely irrelevant because once you're discontinuous, it doesn't matter, right? So this doesn't matter. If you're not continuous, you're not differentiable. Um, so you don't even have to do this work, but I want to show you that if you did, uh, so you can't be differentiable without being continuous first. So the second that continuity fails, I say not differentiable, not continuous, that's it, okay? All right, and that is our video. Uh, yeah, that is our video.